Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and here let's check out the top new games made with Unity launched in December 22. I thought the month of December would be pretty quiet, but it's actually not, it was tough to only pick 10 games, and on top of that, this month had several releases that are using Unity Dots, so that's always awesome to see. The reason why I make these videos is to show you everything that the engine can do, the only limit is really just your own skills and imagination, and the variety and the awesomeness of the games shown here really puts that to the test. All of these games are uniquely impressive, so the list is in no particular order, except for the number one game that is my personal pick of the month. By the way, I'm currently working on my own Steam game called Terminal World Liberation. It's a game with tons of systems, open world, survival, and crafting, automation strategy. Check out the Steam page, add it to your wishlist, and follow for that one. Alright, so starting off at number 10, with a game that is using Unity Dots, here is Ixion. This is a sci-fi city builder survival game with tons and tons of moving pieces. There's lots of robots flying around, lots of conveyor belts. It also has a focus on story, so it's not just a sandbox. There is an actual storyline as you make the best decisions you can in order to help your crew survive. There are huge stellar maps to explore, send out probes to reveal what is hidden, do some mining to get some resources, or some research to unlock new tech. It has already managed to get over 6,000 reviews, so this one is a huge hit. Although they are only mostly positive, but if you're looking for something with a lot of complexity and a huge scale, then this one looks great. Up next, here is another one that is also using Inti Dots. This is Jellycar Worlds. I first saw this game on Twitter a couple of months ago through a really interesting video where the dev basically went through how the game works. Basically, everything that you see here, all of these shapes, they are all really just points. That's how Dots is used. Every single one of these thousands of points is a single entity. Then the game itself feels very natural and jelly, everything squishes and stretches. It's really fun to play around with the physics and watch as a car is crushed and then bounced back into existence. It even has a really fun feature where you can record your microphone and change any of the sound effects in the game. It's a very inventive mechanic that perfectly fits the silliness of the whole game. For something a lot more jolly, here is Little Gator Game. If you like fun adventure platformers, then this is the game for you. You jump around, meet some friends, interact with animals. You have lots of movement abilities to get around in this adorable world. So you can climb, you can swim, glide and slide all over the place as you meet new and interesting characters in your travels. If you're tired of the stresses of every day, then this seems like a great way to spend a jolly afternoon. It has 1000 overwhelmingly positive reviews with a 99% score, so this one is already one of the best reviewed games of all time. Next up, here we have Knights of Honor Sovereign. According to CMDB, this game is also using entities, although I can't quite figure out how. It is a medieval strategy game. It has a map layer and a real-time strategy layer, so you manage your provinces, gather armies, try some diplomacy or some espionage. The battles are all pretty massive, with tons and tons of units fighting all over the place. I guess that's maybe where they're using entities. Visually, the game also looks really good, both the strategy layer and the real-time combat. They also promise that the gameplay is grand strategy, but accessible grand strategy, so if you have trouble getting into these kinds of games, then this could be a fun entry point. Then for some VR, here is Nowntown. It's a language learning game. It looks like a fun mix where it teaches you the words and phrases, but then also asks you to perform the action, so it's really nice. You can have an old lady telling you she doesn't like rodents, and then it's up to you to pick them up and throw them away. It even uses the microphone to test your actual speaking skills. So this one looks like a fun way to learn a new language. It features Japanese, Chinese, Spanish, French, German, and Italian. For me, I've been casually learning Japanese on Duolingo for about a year now, so I'd love to try this out and see how it differs. Then here's a game that shocked me a bit with how it's doing. It's called Sword Ship. It's a really stylish, very unique shoot 'em up with a twist, which is that it's actually a dodge 'em up. You fly a really slick spaceship and there are enemies firing at you. You have no attacks yourself, so you need to position your ship so that the enemies destroy each other. It's a really interesting premise and seems very well produced. The game oozes a very awesome art style. I really like all of the visuals, all of the effects in this game seems to have lots of upgrades that work really well with the core game mechanic. However, this game really shocked me because while it looks great and unique, it's also doing very poorly. It only has 33 reviews, which means it really hasn't sold very well. I thought maybe the issue was lack of wishlist, but it seems they launched with around 7,000, which is a pretty decent number. The genre is definitely a bit niche on Steam. Shoot 'em ups or bullet hell shooters are somewhat small on Steam, so maybe that's it. The game does look really great, so hopefully over time it will find an audience and end up with a really nice long tail. Up next, here we have have Zombie Cure Lab. I can't believe no one has done this concept before. It's a management game with zombies where the goal is not to kill all the zombies, but rather to cure them. It's a really interesting premise. It has all the mechanics you expect from a management game. There's lots of buildings to do all kinds of things. You have human scientists that operate those buildings and can research to unlock all kinds of new technologies. There are still aggressive zombies, so you do need to defend your base, but rather than taking them all out, you need to capture a bunch of them and start the process to convert them from a zombie into a human. 
Just based on the concept alone, I'm already interested, and beyond the unique concept, it also seems very well made with very positive reviews. It just came out into early access, so I'd love to give this one a try when I have some time. Next up, for something very visually striking, here is Project Downfall. It's a bit of a weird name, but it looks like a very well made first person shooter with some unique visuals. Features lots of satisfying destruction, the gunplay feels very weighty, very powerful. The game has a style mechanic, so you get bonus points for headshots, which also enable bullet time for some really awesome moves. The description has a surprisingly large amount of lore, so while it looks like the main focus is on the gameplay, apparently it does have an interesting story. It features leaderboards if you're into that sort of thing, very hardcore gameplay with no health region at all, lots of combos and a sanity system. It just came out of early access and reviews are very positive. Then if you want maximum complexity, here is Final Upgrade. It's a very generic name, but the game itself looks very compelling. Just one look at the trailer and you can immediately tell what kind of game it is. You have tons of units flying around, lots of complex interlock systems. You can mine for resources, terraform planets and conquer the galaxy. The scale of the game is truly massive. I tried to Google to see if this game is also using dots, but I couldn't find anything. It's really complex with tons and tons of logic and systems, so perhaps it's using some kind of custom ECS logic. I quite like the uniqueness of the vertical layout. At least to me, the game looks more vertical rather than an overhead view. So basically, if you like these kinds of games with tons of movement, parts and complex systems, then this looks like an excellent new entry in the genre. And at number one for my personal pick of the month, here is a huge hit that just came out of early access, here is Potion Craft. This was in early access for a little over a year, in that time it got tons and tons of updates based on feedback from the community, the game has some very unique mechanics, it's an alchemist simulator game, so you need to gather all kinds of plants and actually use your tools to brew all kinds of potions, the entire game has a very manual, very satisfying feel, it's up to you to invent new recipes and attract new customers, the crafting system looks really interesting, very complex. As you include ingredients, the potion quote unquote moves on the map which leads to the final result. I definitely would like to play this one to explore all of these unique mechanics, certainly looks like a very unique game. It has already gathered over 14,000 very positive views in the past year, and even though they just launched out of early access, they still have an active roadmap. So if you enjoy the game, you will have lots of content to play for a long time. Alright, so that's 10 awesome new games made with Unity and launched in December 22. I hope this list helped you see how the Unity engine is capable of building anything. The only limits are really just your own skills and your own imagination. Check out my own Steam game, Total World Liberation, and add it to your wishlist. Alright, hope that's useful. Check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.